Hey everyone, this is Three Questions with Keith Fickle. There you go, buddy. I have not used Zoom. I haven't used Zoom in a while. Hey, so I'm actually recording on Zoom with Keith because I had some difficulties with StreamYard and I feel really good about how much trouble I had getting onto Zoom and figuring out how to use this again because I don't use it as much as I used to, which is a good thing, right? Am I right, Keith, a little bit? That's right. Yeah. Kind of got used it a bunch and then got out of the habit. And now it's kind of try to use it again. Yeah. Yeah. So, Hey, so anyone, everyone, uh, thanks for being here today. I have principal Keith Fickle on the podcast. He is actually from, I'm going to say it a brand new high school in Fort Bend ISD. And I'm going to have a little, uh, shout or a little applause at Fort Bend ISD. Uh, I, I actually, and I'm going to put this in quotation marks. I spoke there <laughs> a little <laughs> while ago. But kind of lost my voice, so it was it was a it was a tough struggle. But people are so welcoming. Keith actually gave me a shirt from this high school, walked me out of there, and just was amazingly kind. And I I wanted to have him on the podcast, so we're going to talk a little bit about uh, Keith. Actually, has been blessed with the opportunity to open up a brand new high school, going through that process, and we'll talk more about that. But Keith, thanks for being on the podcast. I know you're I know. You're incredibly busy, so I really appreciate it. But uh, we want to hear about some of your inspiration. I, I I know, and just for everyone listening, Keith is such a wonderful person. I he connected with me before I even uh, actually entered the school, and and just was so kind to me, and met with so many of your great staff. And I, I wanted you to really think about some of the teachers who inspired you because we talked about that on that day. When you think of a teacher in your career who had a big impact on you, whether it's, you know, a colleague, whether it was as a student, who's someone you think of and why? Wow. There's so many people that come, come to mind. Um, I mean, first off my, initially my parents, because my parents were teachers hmm. and they're all, you know, your parents are always kind of your first teacher anyway. Right. Um, and they did a great job, but as far as like having my own classroom teacher, one that, that stands out among a crowd of a crowded field of teachers is my middle school band director. His name is Ken Valiant. Um, he's just an amazing person. We, we really connected on a personal level when I was in sixth grade and and, and joined band. Uh, started learning to play the trombone. And then one day I decided I didn't want to do the trombone. I showed up with a trumpet and he was like, what's this? And uh, but uh, um, yeah, he just really inspired me and, and is, was, a, was a great teacher, still is a great teacher. Uh, that was like in 1980 when I was in sixth grade. We've been friends since. I see him on a, a very regular basis. But uh, we connected kind of even more beyond the music level mm. because, number one, I was in Boy Scouts. He was an Eagle Scout. Uh, we grew up very near each other. He grew up in the North Dallas area. I grew up in, in North Dallas in, in the Plano area. And um, uh, not only was he in Scouts, we went to some of the same summer camps uh, he was a kid. I went to the same camp that he went to. I ended up working at that camp. He even came out to visit me at that camp when I was working at it in high school. Uh, it's Camp Constantine on the Brazos River in, in North Texas. Um, we just kept co kept connected th through all the years. He helped me actually eventually switch to tuba, um, made the kind of progression through most of the brass instruments, but he was a tuba player himself and helped me make that switch to find that place where I could really land and be successful. But um, he ended up being, we're so close that he ended up being my best man at my wedding. Wow. So uh, yeah, he has a, has a big impact on me, but you know, I had a whole slew of other people too, that I could just sit here and name a litany of, of names that in some way that have shaped me and impacted me. Um, even the people who I didn't really appreciate at the time, right. you know, looking back on it now, it's like, like, you know, it's, this hurts me worse than it hurts you kind of thing. Um, <laughs> but uh, no, I, Ken, I give you give him uh, ultimate shout out and kudos. He's just a wonderful human being and, and has inspired a lot of people besides myself. Said the secret word. <laughs> Said it. A little shout out button for him too. That's awesome. The, you know, here's something I know about band teachers. They have the utmost patience <laughs> to be able to go into a room with a bunch of kids who have never played an instrument and how horrible it must sound on that first day and get them to somewhere uh, you know, really powerful. I remember actually when I took band, uh, I want to play the drums forever. And then last second I got to play bass guitar and I just thought it'd be cool. And I don't even know why I was actually shocked that bass guitar was in it. And being a pretty bad kid, 
and having an amp was not a good thing because I could just I could just drown out everybody with the amp, right? And I remember my band teacher, Mr. Howie's like, you need to turn it down. Like you're supposed to be in the background. I'm like, just turn it up all the time. But um, the thing that I always say about band teachers is something to really think about is when I hear someone say, oh, I got to read all these essays, you know, from our kids. And do we get our students to a point where, you know, if we're teaching writing, where we want to read what they write? And the, the amazing band teacher is as much as that would be difficult at the beginning. The point is where you get them to a point where you just want to sit and listen to your kids because you got them to that point, that, that, that artistry of that too. So I love that. I, I, I have a very uh, special p- place in my heart for music teachers, band teachers. My music teacher taught me so much about speaking, which, you know, is something I, I hold dear to, the, to this day. Absolutely. And I don't think I even shared this with you that when I went to college, I ended up becoming a band director. So that was my, uh, that was really? my first teaching job is I did, I was a band director for 17 years before going into, uh, into campus administration. That does not surprise me at all, to be honest. Yeah. So I, I, I appreciate you sharing that. All right. So I met so many amazing, uh, admin there in Fort Bend ISD. And I, I know you have uh, a ton of learning from them over the years and put you in a really special place where you get to open a school and what, what a privilege. But when you think of the administrators that have had an impact on you in your lifetime, who's someone you think of and why? Wow. That's again, that's could be a pretty long list as well. Right. I, I'm surrounded, I'm surrounded by an incredible support system uh, within my peer network, my peer, principal peers, but I'm also supported uh, above me in the hierarchy with uh, an executive director that's really awesome, assistant superintendents, all the way up to our superintendent, Christy Whitbeck. Um, but I guess if, if I really think back on my career, I started teaching in 1993. And I think the person um, who really influenced me maybe the most, and I really remember from the, from the get-go, um, was a guy named Mel Crafter. Um, Mel Crafter, I worked with him at a school called Quail Valley Middle School, and that was from like 1996 to about uh, 2001. Uh, I was there for about five years. He was there for the first three of them, but it was a it was a reopening of a school, uh, much like opening Crawford High School is opening a school. This was a school that had been open, had been closed down and repurposed, and then was decided to reopen it, kind of rebranding it as a, as a new middle school. And so um, it was essentially a new school, new staff, new everybody. But uh, I, th- I think back on the, the level of effort and care and concern that he showed for every single staff member uh, from, from the jump. Um, he, he put together a great team. I think that's as an administrator, as, a, as a, a campus principal, I think that's something I have learned is that Aside from making sure that a campus and a building is safe, I think my number right. one responsibility is to hire the absolute best people because um, then everything else will kind of not necessarily take care of itself, but it's much easier to do all the other things. But he did such a good job of hiring really good people. I mean, obviously myself, but um, <laughs> but he, obviously. Was, he, was, he was just a, a real inspiration because he would be like, he turned the corner and there he was. And he's always had a kind word to say to everyone. If you needed some support, he was there for you. He came to all of our events and all of our functions. Um, and uh, it just it's just a really great support and a role model. And I don't think it really hurt that he looked a little bit like Malcolm X, um, but he's just a really wonderful guy. Hmm. And uh, he, le- he led by example. He didn't just tell you how things, how to do things. He actually would take the time to show yeah. you. And he developed his team around him to be supportive of the mission and vision that he created for the school. And so we only got a chance to to work together for maybe three years or so. And I will, I will, I think this was probably maybe the the one thing that will share the impact that he had on uh, on our staff is because at the end of that third year, um, he called a, a staff meeting together, and um, which we had staff meetings pretty frequently. But he, it's where he announced that he was going to be leaving. And I, th- I think he was stepping into an uh, assistant superintendent role uh, mm-hmm. in the district. But he basically s- said that, and you could have heard a pin drop in in the uh, in the in the cafeteria where we had that meeting. And to me, that's a testimony of like, first of all, kind of came it came out of the blue, but the level of respect that every single staff member had for him and and, the, and what he had done and just a, to lead us in, a th- in three short years. 
Um, it was it was kind of devastating, but we were happy for him right. to, to move and advance his career. So you always have to be happy for someone when they get a promotion. But uh, it just thinking about that that day when he had made that announcement, we all just sat there kind of in stunned silence, not really sure how to respond. Um, so I, I think that's a testament to how revered and respected he was, not just by me, but my peers. And then, you know, that's a, I, I love that story because there's, there's always that sense when you work with people like that, that, you know, like they're incredible, but you know that they're going to be moving somewhere, somewhere else at some point too. Like there's always kind of that assumption in the background. And the thing that really stuck out to me was the ability to build a team around himself and you, like who he looked for the most important hire I ever did when I became a principal was my assistant principal and the, my assistant principal, Cheryl Johnson, she was amazing. And the thing that I loved about her was she would challenge me because I worked with her as an assistant principal. She was on, she was one of the teachers and she would push me and she would challenge me. And we had very different viewpoints on things, but we had the same goal in mind which is why I hired her. I didn't need, I, and I always say this, I didn't need another George. I already had that. I had, I needed someone else who thought differently than me and saw my, you know, my weaknesses filled in some of the spots and actually um, maybe appealed to different members of staff that I wouldn't appeal to that people didn't want to come talk to me, but they, I knew they would feel more comfortable talking to her and, you know, and vice versa. So that team club, that, that team element is so important because you have to think about the holistics of your staff. Too often I see, administrators hiring clones of themselves. And it's like, well, you already got you. Why would you hire more people like you? I understand people with the same vision, but how they get there can look different. So I, I love that story. All right. So you're, you're going through a, it's kind of funny. Cause when I ask you this question about your first year of teaching, but I, I bet you're kind of feeling a little first year teacherish right now too, you know, opening a brand new school. Cause everything oh. is a little bit starting from scratch. So when you go and you think back and this is your this is year 30 for you, right? If you started 93. Something like that. Yeah. 30. Something like that. Right. So yeah. this is the, the big, this is like the anniversary edition. <laughs> <laughs> so you go back, you think of your first year of teaching, you had a great administrator. Um, you know, you you reference a lot of things, you know, started off as a, a band director yourself. If you can go back and talk to yourself in that first year of teaching, what, what did I'm like, I almost want to say like, what advice would you give yourself? And I, I'm guessing you already kind of are giving yourself that, <laughs> that grace, that first year teaching grace kind of going through what you're going through right now. Well, yeah, absolutely. So uh, thinking back to my first year in teaching, um, I had a really great university professor, Kenneth Davis. He was the choral director at, uh, at Texas Tech University, where I did my undergraduate studies. And when my senior, my group of seniors, my peers, when we were graduating with our music education degrees, he kind of put us together in one of our last class meetings. And he kind of said, you know, you guys are about to walk across the stage and shake the chancellor's hand and you're not going to actually get your diploma. You're going to have to go over to some other place to actually get it, but you're going to get, you're going to get the cover, right. And walk down with it. He goes, just, I want you to understand that and you don't appreciate things in your youth, right. You don't, what people tell you, the advice they give you, you don't really fully understand it because you don't really have the frame of reference. Um, but I wish I had gone back and really listened to what he said because his, his words were, um, just consider that your degree that you're getting, your Bachelor of Music Education or what have you, is really simply a license to learn uh, more as you move forward. So just realize you don't know everything that you think you know because you haven't had certain experiences. And so, I mean, I we, we I heard that in, I heard the words, but it's if you don't have a frame of reference for them, um, it's kind of hard to fully understand. So you, you know, fast forward to getting that first job, going into the first classroom feeling like I knew everything and I was on fire to change the world, which I think is actually a good thing that people yeah. have that fire and that passion, that fire in the belly. Um, but you also have to temper it with like realizing that it, the world doesn't always work um, the way that it maybe it does say in a, in a Hollywood scripted movie. So um, thinking I, I knew all the details and I, and I knew everything I needed to know to be successful. What I found out was uh, I was very fortunate to be paired with a to be an assistant band director with a really wonderful, wonderful uh, uh, director named Nancy Caston. He she has since passed away, um, but I was really fortunate to be paired with her because there were things that I thought I knew and I knew how to do them. And I thought I had all the pedagogical tools in my tool belt and knew how to I knew how to teach uh, all the different instruments. Turns out I just was scratching the surface 
about what I needed to know. And she she really challenged me by bringing other people in to help the two of us uh, through clinician work um, and going to master classes ourselves about how to do instrument specific pedagogy and large ensemble skills. Um, I quickly realized that I didn't know everything that I right. thought that my degree told me that I had known. So I, I think back to Dr. Davis's uh, admonition, like just remember that your bachelor's degree is really simply a license to go out and learn. And so um, I don't think that really stuck in, you know, until maybe later on, but uh, I really appreciate that. So I guess what I would tell myself is, you know, everything that I'm doing is a license to learn. Every every misstep uh, or every everything that we might characterize as a problem is just really simply an opportunity. And I've I've turned that around in like parent conversations sometimes when when someone is very upset with either me personally or something that happened that, uh, you know, really everything that happened is really an opportunity for us to listen, to yeah. understand, and to find a way to improve. So I, I try to work that into a conversation. It doesn't necessarily change what whatever the situation was, but I, I think using that phrase, like this is just simply an opportunity for us to improve. And, yeah. and the fact that this happened is going to allow me to improve and be a better teacher, principal, whatever, what have you, uh, than if, if it hadn't happened. So uh, I really appreciate Dr. Davis's admonition. I just wish I had learned it a little, like acted upon it a little bit right. sooner. You're right. Well, they, hey, you got you got a lot of time ahead of you to keep doing that too. Uh, when I was when I was thinking about what you're saying, it, it's kind of the idea. You know, you shared something that really hit me is that sometimes people say, "Oh, like this is best practice," and I'm like, well, "Yeah, it will work perfectly as long as the conditions are perfect," which they never are. So part of it is that we can learn from best practice. Uh, when people share that, but there's always a variable and that's people and people are always different. We have different situations. What you do with this class this year could look very different from last class. And there's things that you can use. There's things that you're gonna have to discard, but there is always that there's always the variable of people and really kind of understanding where you're at, who you serve is really powerful. And I, you know, I know you're an incredible learner and it's, it's really nice to hear, um, someone as awesome as you inspired by so many other awesome people, because sometimes on the podcast, I hear about people who are awesome in spite of, but I can tell you are awesome because you're inspired by it. So I, I love that. So everyone make sure you follow Keith. I know he's going to share a lot about his journey with uh, opening up a new school this year. Keith, thank you so much for taking the time. I can't wait to talk to you more. All right. Thanks, George. I appreciate it. Thanks for having me on. Thanks everyone for listening.